Welcome to Daily Armor. Today we're going to be in Deuteronomy chapter 8, looking at verse number 6. I've got a little theme going on for the next several days, and it's about His ways. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. He don't do things the way that we would do things. He doesn't um, think about things in the way that we would think about things. Um, and I want to go and look at some different areas where he talks about his ways. And he talks about it a lot in the book of Deuteronomy. And so, Lord willing, over the next several days that we'll be looking at some of his ways. Um, but let's look at verse number six in chapter number eight. I do challenge you to read the whole chapter. Um, the whole chapter was um, helpful to me um, today, but I really want to focus on just verse number six for the sake of time. It says, therefore, thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him. So when we're talking about um, his ways, then he's got some instructions for how we do things his way. And to do things his way, he's saying, start with the basics, keeping the commandments. What are the commandments? We have those public commandments that he gave to everyone. Um, you go back to Exodus chapter 20, and you can look at the Ten Commandments starting around verse number 3 and ending around verse number 17. And you can look at um, the Ten Commandments. And what they deal with was is beginning with our relationship with him. They, he tells us in his, in his word, in verse number three, he says, you shall have no gods before me. Um, so he's starting with his first couple of commandments are about our relationship with him. And then the end of those commandments, the last of the commandments are about our relationship with one another, with, um, you know, family, friends, strangers, enemies, about how we are to deal and, and handle one another. Um, and so we start with those public things. But then I do challenge you to go back, write down those private personal things, those instructions that he has had for you. I know if he's got those personal private instructions for me, things that I am to do, things that I am not to do, that I need to write those things down. Those are personal. Those are um, private. Those are not that I can't share that with you, um, but those are um, specific to what he wants for me or what he wants or what he doesn't want for me. And he has his reasons um, and I need to just follow those instructions. And so sometimes, sometimes we're waiting on more instructions. We're waiting on this answer, or that answer. But he's like, but you're not doing what I've already told you to be doing. Or while we're waiting, do those things he's already told us to do. That's going to help us while we're waiting. That's going to help us to keep our focus. That's going to help us to obey those public uh, you know, commandments, especially that about, you know, not going after anything else or anyone else or self or anything, nothing before the Lord, nothing, nothing, no one before the Lord. And um, that's our first commandment. We don't want to leave the Lord. We don't want to forsake the Lord. We don't want to walk away from the Lord. We don't want to discount what God is doing. We don't want to start thinking, oh, look how wonderful I am or look how, you know, look what I've done, look what I've accomplished. No, we don't want to look at others and say, oh, there, that's where my hope is. It's in, you know, it's in this job. It's in that person. It's in this situation. It's in this. I can't be happy unless this happens. I can't be happy unless that happens. No, all our hope is in the Lord. All my hope is in Jesus. Um, and he tells us to do some things in verse number six. Therefore, thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord, thy God, this is personal, it's public and it's personal, to walk in his ways, to walk in his ways. In other words, we have to determine, we have to purposefully do it. It's not going to come natural because his ways are not our ways, right? So it's not something I would naturally be inclined to do. It's not something naturally that I would be drawn to. It's not something natural um, you know, I have to push away the way that I would do things. I would have to push aside what I think that, you know, well, Lord, it can't be done this way. He's like, no, you walk and, you know, you do what I have instructed you to do publicly and privately um, in his ways, doing it his way. It's not going to always make sense because his ways are different than our ways. It's not going to always um, you know, he's not going to always unfold the plan, um, you know, and have it all laid out for us. Um, and it's, and I want you to notice the end of verse number six, it says, and to fear him. Now we know that this is talking about a reverential fear. 
but it is also talking about a be afraid of him fear. Um, because if you do read uh, the whole chapter of, of Deuteronomy chapter 8, he says very plainly, um, if you don't walk in my ways, if you do forget me, if you do leave the Lord, if you do follow after other things or self or a person or a whatever, he says, if you do go after those things, if you do go against me, he says, there are some repercussions and you're not going to want to, you know, you're not going to want to um, be a part of that. He's, he's given us some, um, um, some warnings. If you look at um, uh, verse number, let's see, verse number 19, it says in, in chapter 8 of Deuteronomy, and it shall be if thou do it all forget the Lord thy God. In other words, if you forsake the Lord, if you forget the Lord, if you serve someone else, if you serve something else, if you bow down, if you create images, and I'm not just talking about making a little idol that you pray to. Um, sometimes that's obvious that, you know, that's happening. But what's the not so obvious is when you're like, Lord, I know what you want me to do, but I'm just too afraid. Lord, I know I, I know what you want me to do, but I just can't forgive them. Lord, I know I, I know what you want me to do, but I just... I, I just, you know, that's not what, that's not interesting to me. That's, you know, I don't, that's outside my comfort zone. And he's saying, you get outside your comfort zone, you'll go guess what you want to do. You go against what even others are telling you to do. Um, I know that the Lord settled in my heart something that I needed to do. And I've had, and I was expecting it. I had some, you know, discouragement, you know, and, and uh, some, you know, those that are, that don't want me to do this. Um, but I'm going with what the Lord has told me to do. And it's up to him for how long I do this or if he wants to change what I do and when I do it, then that'll be up to him. But my purpose is to walk in his ways. That's what I have to determine to do, even if it puts me outside my comfort zone, even if it's something I don't necessarily want to do, um, but I'm doing what he wants me to do. And that's the most important thing. And the reason is because we need to fear him. We do need to reverence and respect him and not want to disappoint him, but we also do need to fear him. Look at verse number 19. And it, it shall be, if thou do it all, forget the Lord thy God and walk after other gods and serve them and worship them. This that concludes self. This if you just do what you want to do. You're, you're serving and worshiping self. I testify against you this day that ye shall surely perish. The Lord saying, you want to fear me out of respect. He says, but you do want to fear me because I am in control and you might think you're in control. It's like dealing with that, you know, that, that, uh, that, uh, that, um, mother, son or mother, daughter, whatever that, that parent relationship. And when you are raising your children, there needs to be a certain amount of, of fear, of repercussions. They need to flinch when they think they're going to fix it and get a spanking. It needs to hurt. You know, I mean, it doesn't, you don't need to beat a child, but you need to, they need to know that these are going to be consequences you're not going to want to live with um, if you're choosing to pitch your fit or act, you know, act out or disobey or I told you not to mess with that because you can break that and you did it anyway, well, then you're going to get a spanking. Um, and so the Lord's saying, you're going to perish. You're going to perish. As the nations, verse number 20, as the nations which the Lord destroyeth before your face, he's saying, I'm going to treat you like I've treated the enemies in your life. And he says, I don't think you want to do that. I don't think you want to be a part of that. Um, so shall ye perish because you would not be obedient unto the voice of the Lord your God. He's like, you're going to do it my way, not your way. And if you don't, there's going to be some, there's going to be some bad, bad repercussions from it. So we need to determine that we're going to do it his way and we're going to push aside fear. We're going to push aside self. We're going to push aside others. We're going to push aside what makes sense because it's not going to make sense because he's told us, I don't do the things the way you would do with them. I don't think about the things the way that you would think about them. It's not going to make sense. That's okay. You need to trust me and you need to follow me and you need to keep the commandments and you need to walk in his way. Not my way, not your way, not somebody else's way, but walk in his way. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing you again soon.